Hi guys, we're going to finish up our plaid print and stripe flat project today with our prints. And the print should be fairly easy um, because we've already created a repeat. Um, so we don't have to create the repeat like we did with the stripes. The only thing we have to do is we have to size it down a little bit. So let's pop off to where we left off in Illustrator. And um, we're going to be working with these prints today. I... <laughs> was terrible and did not save the print example that I showed you guys in the print repeat video, the lovely leaf. So I made just a quick sort of, you know, little bubbly polka dot uh, repeat instead uh, to serve as uh, sort of stand in. And let's just review um, what we've already done. So we did the stripes and uh, I finished it off. Um, we only did, I think, the warm and the cool, but here I've done the warm, the cool, and the neutral and the stripes. And I also finished off with uh, the shirts. So I have the warm, the cool, and the neutral plaids for the shirts uh, as well. Um, as you can see, I've sort of started off with my prints. I've done my warm. So um, we started it off exactly the way we did all the other flats. So I grabbed my uh, skirt example here, my flat, I grabbed it and I copied and pasted it into here. Um, then what I did is I went back to my print examples and I scaled down this print. So um, I actually have the same thing already for the cool, but let's work with the brown. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I click on it, I get my pattern repeat right here, okay? So I'm going to go directly into the pattern editor to scale this down. Um, so it's a little bit different than the stripes and the plaids where we scaled it and then made the repeat. But since I already have the pattern repeat created, I can double click the swatch where I see the print repeat and go right ahead and start to scale it down. Now this needs to be scaled down the same reason the stripes and the plaids need to be scaled down. Our example swatches are meant to be actual size, the actual size that the print is going to be in. However, our um, flats are much smaller. So to scale it down accordingly, they will look obviously smaller on the smaller flats because they are not actual size. So again, we need to go ahead and scale it down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select everything in my print repeat right now and hold shift to scale proportionately and squish it down, okay? Now, as you can see, that opens up a big space in between our tile repeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to adjust the numbers here so they can come together. And this might take a little bit of trial and error. I've already done this, so um, I know pretty much the size it needs to be. And then there we are. I have my scaled down print repeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and save a copy. And now I have that in my pattern swatch right here. So I'm gonna cancel, otherwise this would be, have been changed. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a swatch with my new print pattern in it. And we can see how it's smaller than the old one. I'm going to copy and paste it into my work here. That'll allow the print swatch to pop up and I can select right from this swatch too. Now. I created the first one the same way as we created these guys. I made sure that my black outline was on a top layer. I locked it and then I filled in my print down here. Just like we did for the plaids, the stripes, and I used that pen tool to just outline the shape um, that I wanted uh, to have the print repeat. So now that I've done that and I've made a copy of it, it's gonna be really quick and easy to simply fill in my other print repeat. Now it looks like this got a little 
this so I can't see the oh there because there is no design here <laughs> And then uh, these guys were solid colors. Just want this and this, this and this. And let's make that the light brown. Okay. Oh, I selected the wrong thing. I'm sorry. So if that happens, just double check. Um, because what I wanted to do was select this inner part. I'm going to make sure that I do that. Let's double check. There we go. I had selected the black lines, which I didn't want to do. And if that's going to be tricky, just try zooming in. And actually for this, I want to make sure I have the stroke set to null. So there is our neutral skirt, and like I said, I already have our print design for the cool. I've done that, so I can finish up real quick. swatch since so I already have it in here oh looks like I took the large one and not the small one so let me go back over to our examples and oh, I think I did it in here make sure I'm getting the right one as in comparison to our larger one Okay, that's the large one. What about this one? Well, it looks like I didn't make one for the blue, so let's do it once again. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's make sure I'm filling it. There we go. Again, this is going to be as simple and easy as just selecting and using the eyedropper tool to change our color. Let's zoom in nice and close so I get the proper selection of my color. If it's not filling in the way you want to, you may have made the same mistake I did before. Just make sure you're uh, not selecting the lines. make that blue. There we go. Well, what does purple look like? See, that's what's, actually, I kind of like the purple. Um, that's what's nice about Illustrator 2 is you can, once you have these sections selected, you can really just test to see what colors that you like. Actually, the pink, yeah. Maybe I'll stick with purple. Make it a little different this time. Okay. And then they, uh, once you have all of your prints, just clean up all the other elements that you no longer need, and you're good. You know, at this point too, um, this is fairly a large project, but if you really want to wow me, you can throw in, spend an extra couple minutes to throw in some drop shadows. So we did drop shadows on the first one, but I'll reiterate it. And again, this is not required for this assignment at all, nor is it ever really required for a flat. Again, it's just a little bit of razzle dazzle to make your flats look really nice. And it might seem, oh, you know, um, it's gonna take a long time, but it's actually not. Um, so once you have flats like this, so I only really need to draw three different shapes and then copy and paste them for each one. So it's actually a lot simpler even 
than what we did in the original flat version. So if you remember when we did the original flat version, we did the drop shadows, we had to create a white base so the shadow didn't show through. But since these are already colored, I don't even need to do that. So let me show you how quick and easy for uh, you know an example like this, it would be to create the drop shadows. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my stroke null and then I'm gonna create a gray fill and I'm underneath, I've locked my two layers and I'm very important that I'm working on an underneath layer, um, underneath the locked layers where everything else is. And what I'm gonna do is very simply just like we did before in the other example, do a quick outline of my whole garment shape. It should only take a minute, and this is really the most amount of work we're gonna do. The rest is really just sort of copy pasting and positioning. Now, once I have that, you can't see it because it's on an underneath layer, but let me just toggle off the visibility so you can see. So we have our gray shape underneath. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur So I see maybe a little less fuzzy. Perfect. Then I'm just going to simply set it um, to the right and down. You can set it to the left and down too, or you know, however you want it. And since all my shirts are the same shape, I'm just going to copy and paste. Copy, paste, and place for the rest of them. And try to make sure you set it out, you know, so it's, it's pretty equal or else the lighting will look weird. And I'll just go in, copy, paste, and place. So easy peasy. So see, and you can see the sort of effect, especially contrasted with the skirts that don't have it yet, really kind of gives that nice little pop. So again, if you want to experiment, um, uh, it doesn't take that much longer to do it. And again, um, it's not necessary, but um, especially if you're going to be putting these in a portfolio or something. Again, um, illustrator flats, especially colored illustrator flats, are something that almost every uh, fashion design company either requires is there is uh, definitely looking for uh, the skills to be able to do in who they hire. So any way to sort of make yourself look a little bit better than the rest or stand out from the rest or, um, you know, that looks like you are capable of at least little bells and whistles um, are really good and I, I would recommend doing it. You know, um, it's, it's something that, you know, if I have, you know, 100 flats to do um, by the end of the day, I'm not gonna bother with my drop shadow in a sort of production sense, um, but for sort of showcasing something, for something that you want to look really nice, for something you want to look, you know, really special, um, uh, definitely it's, it's worth it because it's, it's really easy and it's really quick to apply. All right, so now we are here and um, so we're pretty much done. Um, I, since I have done 
the drop shadow on these, I would go and do the drop shadow on the rest of them because it would look funny to do some with and some without, especially in the same document. Um, but uh, you don't have to watch me do the whole, everything for the drop shadows. So um, I hope that this was a fun assignment for you. Um, I know there's probably a, a few things that are kind of a little wiggly. Just remember to always check your layers, utilize your layers, lock layers that are not in use so you don't accidentally start to like click on them and then switch layers unknowingly. Um, play around, those print repeats um, can be kind of tricky. Um, but hopefully uh, you are feeling fairly confident both with flats and also with uh, print repeats by the end of this project. Um, this is a big one. Uh, so usually we are having about two projects per week, but this is a fairly big one, so it's the only one. Um, any questions, just please let me know. Uh, you can also send me uh, your .ai version. So when you save the working version, you see these are all working versions, so they're .ai. That's you just um, would get that um, by going to save as. We talked about this in the last video. Um, but you can send me the Illustrator version, the .ai file, your working file. If you are stuck or um, just something isn't going right, I can take a look at it um, and get back to you to help you. Um, don't get frustrated. <laughs> take your time, take a breath, take a uh, second. If there's something that is not going right, again, check your layers. Um, check the visibility of your layers. Uh, all that stuff, because most of our accidents can come from that. Um, also, if something isn't filling properly, um, uh, so you'll see, let's say I want to do a box over here and I want it to be filled with this pattern. And you say, oh, I'm clicking it, I'm clicking it, it's not happening. Well, what happened is it filled in the stroke because my stroke was placed in the forefront. So double check, double check to see what's happening here in your fill and your stroke. So if I click on my fill, so it's now in the foreground, it's above the stroke, and I click here, then it will fill. Um, and that can be really easy to um, confuse you. I've been confused by it many times. So double check to see what's going on in your fill and your stroke. Um, and you know have fun um so uh, again uh, please ask any questions and i can't wait to see uh your flats and your prints and your fun stripes and everything else um and hopefully even if you're not 100 percent with illustrator um i hope at least that you can sort of see how illustrator is really uh provides us a tool to make designing and especially these sort of prints and stripes and pattern repeats, uh, it can make them so much easier and faster to make. So I know drawing by hand prints and stripes and plaids, I hate doing them by hand. It takes so long to render um, uh, and you know it's hard to make it look nice and clean. Um, but with this, you can just, you can swap in and out prints and colors and you can test things out really easily and you can see different iterations. And if you make a mistake, you can fix it. Whereas if you're doing it by hand, mistakes are much less, it's much more forgiving in Illustrator than it is by hand. It lets you make mistakes and it lets you fix them. Um, and no matter how many mistakes you make, you can still end up with a perfectly clean, perfectly professional looking drawing. And this is really why it's so utilized and so favored um, in the industry is because of its quickness and its ease. And you might be saying, yeah, quickness and ease, sure, but not when I'm still struggling with it. But don't worry, you will get the hang of it. You will become more fluid. And I swear to you, um, it will seem like, why would I ever do flats by hand? Why would I ever render prints and plaids by hand when I have Illustrator? Hopefully, I'm hoping you'll get to that point. If it's not even by the end of this semester, um, you'll get there eventually, I promise. All right, guys, I'm signing off. Bye-bye.